Hey guys, what is going on? It's TomK6505 here, and today I am bringing you guys a little extension of the tutorial that I did the other day for exporting objects from 3ds Max into CryEngine with the colliders and stuff. Um, so in the tutorial that I did the other day, I was only working with one CryEngine object um, and one proxy. Um, if you don't know what that means uh, in terms of like the proxy, go and watch the previous tutorial because that covered it. Um, but here I'm working with multiple proxies um, to, you know, for example, you could make a, kind of a cone sort of object. You could make a, sort of a standing totem pole sort of thing, I guess. I don't quite know how to describe the kind of shape I'm thinking of. Um, so anyway, launching straight into it. Uh, no more chatting. I've made this basic texture here with again my proxy and a wall texture which I've dropped into Photoshop saved as a crytiff. Again if you don't know what that means go and watch my previous video because I did it there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to make a wall um, with a couple of doorways in it. Um, well I think I'm just going to make a wall with a or two doorways in it. Um, so I'm going to quickly make myself a box. Um, I'm going to make it three meters high by let's say six wide. Um, and I don't really care about the length so much. Um, that's that's fine. I I don't mind that. Now I'm going to set the position of this to zero zero zero. Um, and now I'm going to quickly make a couple of other boxes which are going to be used just in combination they're just going to be used as the boolean with the boolean tool to make a couple of basic doorways whoa no I didn't want that I wanted the width to be one and the height to be two <laughs> sorry so we're going to put one there and I'm going to make the other one over here uh, maybe like that no, that's fine by me so now what I'm going to do is like say I'm going to make um, the holes I'm just going to use the boolean tool um, this you don't need to know um, this for the tutorial that's just for me and I know that's probably super duper inefficient making it like that I, I don't really care that much for the sake of this video it doesn't matter um, probably way better ways to make a door like using you know say a poly and then just drag these down to make them longer um, like the extrude I think it is but it, it doesn't matter for me personally right now so now what we're going to do is um, obviously depending on how we made our wall like you know if this had you know more parts to it like more polys and stuff um, or you know it had like extra holes in it like you know if say somebody had um, like knocked out a brick say here if it was a brick wall you know somebody had knocked out one of the bricks so you needed like a couple of holes in it but you just wanted them for show you know you didn't actually want them to be um, you didn't actually you know want them to have any sort of interaction obviously to then export just this object with its proxy and have each of those holes you know cut out of the collider it would be more inefficient because then the you know the PC has to process those holes and given the fact that it's in a regular shape um, even this wall being in a regular shape, it would give the PC a harder time than it needs to have. Um, so we're going to do multiple proxies to make it um, basically, you know, a bit nicer on the um, to make it a bit nicer on the processor. So I'm going to quickly changing all the textures to be my wall, my two. Um, and then, like I say, I'm going to make multiple proxies, and I'm going to call that, by the way, um, naming here is just as important as the last time. Um, so, I mean, in this case, naming is even more important, um, because last time you had to do call this whatever you want, but then, um, you know, your proxy had to be called proxy. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to call this um, wall render mesh. Okay, um, and that's to basically tell us that the render mesh will only be used as what you will see in the engine. You know, this isn't going to have any use beyond that. This isn't going to become our proxy like we did with the object in the last tutorial. 
So now I'm going to make some boxes. Um, I'm going to make, of course, you know, there are going to need to be a few of them, obviously. Um, I'm going to make this one there. And there we go. And you want it to be, of course, about the size of the wall. That's fine. And I'm going to copy this a few, um, just a couple of times. I'm going to copy it once here. Okay. Um, ooh, also, before I do, actually. Sorry. So there are a couple of things... Um, in terms of these proxies, um, I'm going to quickly start naming them. And the way you're going to name them this time is instead of just calling them proxy, because there are multiple ones, if you just name the proxy, of course, they would all overlap. So you're going to call these ones dollar physical underscore proxy underscore whatever number you want. I'm going to go sequential 01, 02, 03, etc. Um, you're also going to make them edit polys um, and, of course, uh, set the material to them and then make sure that every poly on the object uses the ID for the proxy, so in this case 1. So there you go, that is now um, our proxy object. So now I'm going to copy this over here like I said before, and I'm just going to make one copy for now and I'm going to call it physical proxy 02. I'm then going to copy it into the middle and call it physical proxy 03. Uh, and that's the reason I sorted all the properties out on that one before is so that then when I copy them they're already applied to these. Um, of course depending on how what different shape of proxies your object is going to use, you can't just do that every single time. So be wary of that, obviously. So I'm gonna again just try and place that in the middle. I'm gonna make it a bit wider than that. Um, and then I'm gonna put it just kind of there. And that should do nicely. And now I need to quickly create a couple of boxes to act as the proxy for the bit above the doorway. And again, making sure that I apply the material to it and change it to an edit poly. Name it, I'm going to call this one proxy04. Again, add an edit poly. Select all of them and set them to be poly. So there we go. And drag it up, up, up so it aligns with my doorway. And make it taller because it's too small. And then I'm going to copy this one over here to be on top of the other doorway. I'm going to call that 06. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, that can be 05 again my sequentialness it doesn't matter on the number but that's my sequential <laughs> that's my sequential mind for you um, also these are quite wide I didn't realize how wide I had made them oh well it doesn't really matter now one thing that we do need to do before we now make them all combine into kind of one object you'll see how we do that in a minute but what we need to do is for each of the proxies and again you can just highlight them all for this um, you don't need to, you know, go into each one like separately because that would take you a long while. So selecting all of them, you want to right click and go to object properties. You want to go over to user defined and then, of course, this will change dependent on what you have used as your proxy. Um, but for these, because they're all boxes, I'm just going to type box. Of course, if, you know, one of them was a cylinder, you wouldn't call that one box. You wouldn't put box in that user property you would of course write you know cylinder sphere whatever it is sorry i forgot what example i used there <laughs> but yeah if it was a cylinder you would put cylinder if it was a sphere you'd put sphere if it was a torus i guess you'd put torus and so on and so forth so now with all of those set up what we're going to do is we're going to create a dummy helper and i'm just going to place it in the center of my wall you make it as big as you like i'm going to make it about that big and I'm going to place it at 0, 0, 0. Now what you're going to do is you're going to align the pivots of every other object to this helper. So if I go in, if I press H to get my select by name, I'm going to select all of them except from the dummy itself. Um, go over to your hierarchy tab, um, effect pivot only, and set them all to 0, 0, 0. And now you can see, you know, if you select every single object, 
they all move and rotate around the same point. Good, good, good stuff. But of course they are all still separate objects, so we now need to explore them as one so that the um, engine will recognize this as one big object with the separate colliders. Um, just as well, um, to let you know, um, for obviously you can see we've got the wall render mesh and here is where we need to change the name of our dummy helper to match that so I'm gonna call it wall. Um, for the tutorial I followed I actually called it separator I don't know if it matters I guess we're gonna find out in a minute so I've called that wall and then of course you've got the wall render mesh sat around somewhere if I can find it there you go wall render mesh and then the, sep uh, the dummy's called wall now we're going to go into our schematic view and we're gonna go graph editors um, and new schematic view if you've already got a schematic view you can I guess open that one but of course I need a new one because we didn't already have one now you need to follow this very carefully we're gonna go into hierarchy mode and you're gonna click the connect th tool thingy um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna make all of these a child of the dummy helper so it's gonna go you're gonna make first the render mesh the child of the dummy helper and then you're gonna make each of the proxies a child of the render mesh not of the dummy helper so make each of the proxies a child of the render mesh and then the render mesh a child of the uh, dummy helper so that's nice and now of course you can see that if we move our dummy helper everything moves with it which is exactly what we wanted and we're now going to before we export we're going to select all of the objects um, and reset the X form on them I don't know why it's just part of the tutorial go with it <laughs> <laughs> okay so we've set up everything we've done the user properties we've applied our material made the proxies proxies and the render mesh you know have the render textures so that's all we need to do in terms of the modeling now we just need to export so making sure that your overall material is selected as last time instead of any of the sub objects you're going to click create material if your editor's not open again you'll get the uh you'll get the error it'll start up an instance and then you can just click create material again and I'm gonna call it um, test proxy wall I guess why not okay doesn't there we go and again you're gonna change the shader to no draw and for this I'm gonna change the surface type to concrete because it has a rock texture so why not um, okay that's all we need to do there um, and now I'm gonna just make sure that when you export you don't need to add everything all you're gonna do is add the dummy helper so in my case my dummy helper is called wall so there you go now I'm gonna set the custom file name ooh and bef again before you try and export make sure you save I always I nearly always forget that so before you try and export it make sure that you save your max file otherwise it won't work so again I'm just gonna call this wall proxy test now making sure that I set the name to be the same as the material that I made before I'm just gonna see what I called it I can't even remember uh, test proxy wall .mtl. so I'm gonna call it oh nearly I'm gonna call it test proxy wall is that it yeah test proxy wall and export nodes and hopefully everything should go fine like it just did I didn't get any errors so that's perfect hopefully so if we hop along into our editor ooh, ooh, no I've already got it open no don't crash on me thank you <laughs> so I'm gonna go into my brush you can see these in my previous tests and here is separator 1 and separator 2 that's why I decided to try changing the name this time so test proxy wall and it unfortunately didn't pick up the material again <laughs> so I'm just gonna go and apply it so there you go, you can see that the texture has gone fine, you can't see the proxy objects, um, but hopefully, when we spawn him, of course there we go, you can walk into the walls themselves, but you can walk through the doorways um, that I made. So there you go, that is how to make the object with multiple proxies, and export them all as one big file. Sorry, did I mention, um, actually, ooh, that was silly of me. I don't know why I did that. Whoops. Sorry. I'm going to get rid of that. <laughs> yep. 
and I'm actually going to close my editor right now. Um, I'm going <laughs> to reopen an instance of it because I forgot. I don't know. It still worked there, so I don't know how important it is. But you need to make sure that when you export, you also check export file per node um, and leave merge all nodes off. So again, I'm going to export no problems. So that's nice. I don't know how I forgot that. I really don't because that was apparently quite a vital part of it but you can see that it did work without it um, so again apply in the material so you can see that it did work without doing that so in that case I really don't have any idea why it is so essential that you check export file per node it just said that on the tutorial I I don't know. So anyway, it does work without that, but for the sake of following the tutorial, do check that export file per nodes button and leave the merge all nodes off. And anyway, you can see it collides just fine. So that's cool. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. Um, and of course, going through my testing house as well, you can see of course you, you collide with all the walls. I know the textures are crap, but collide with all the walls and then you can walk in the doorway you can also drop through the roof because i didn't add the proxies for that i didn't feel the need just yet so yeah i hope this you know works for you i hope it helped um so, but that's all for this video so like i say i hope it did help um i hope it did work if not i'm sorry i don't know what would be wrong with it you can see it worked perfectly for me so i don't know if you didn't follow it obviously exactly then uh just try going back over it and try following it as exactly as you can um, but again then this can be done for you know as many objects as you really need um, so you could go um, and you could make a another box for another wall you could then duplicate or apply that texture to the box changing it into an edit poly again you can then of course you know make that one have the uh, you know wall texture, copy it, have it as the proxy. Uh, I'm going to call that physical proxy. I think it was six. I need this time. Um, and with that one, uh, select all of them. Ooh. Set it to the proxy. Uh, make sure that you change the proxies properties again to box Ooh. and go back into your graph editor open that schematic view that we had before and now of course you've got the new one so oh again you would need to combine that into the render mesh sorry I forgot about that again just make sure that you then make the physical proxy a child of the render mesh um, export of course that dummy helper on its own again and that one should collide as well so it it can be done for as many objects as you need um, so yeah anyway guys <laughs> now that I've added that on it really is the end of this video so thank you for watching hope it worked and I will see you in the next video goodbye